In April 1878, William Morris, a leading figure in the arts and crafts movement, took over the lease of The Retreat, a grand Georgian house on the banks of the Thames in Hammersmith. The writer, George Bernard Shaw, described this house as magical. Morris renamed it Kelmscott House, linking it to his family home, Kelmscott Manor, further down the Thames in Oxford. The house, he said, might be made very beautiful with a touch of my art. Although he had to persuade his wife with the promise of her very own pony and trap for travelling into central London, Jane Morris finally agreed to move into Kelmscott House. And William spent the last 18 years of his life here with his wife Jane and his daughters Jenny and May, creating some of the most iconic designs of the arts and crafts movement and championing a return to traditional handmade production methods, including printing, embroidery, tapestry, and weaving, which Morris considered to be the highest of art forms. The William Morris Society's latest exhibition, The Deer Warp and Weft at Hammersmith, is based on the curator Helen Ellison's own research and her intriguing book, A History of Kelmscott House. It tells the stories of the varied and illustrious inhabitants, including Sir Francis Ronalds, who constructed the first working electric telegraph in 1816 in the gardens of Kelmscott House, and the comedy actress Athene Sailor, who in 1990 celebrated her 101st birthday in the coach house. It also tells the stories of the creative community of visitors and collaborators, which included the pre-Raphaelite artists Dante Gabriel Rossetti and Edward Byrne Jones, and includes photographs, artefacts and weavings, which all demonstrate Morris's own creative energy. I caught up with Helen to find out more about the exhibition and hear her thoughts on the life, work and ideas of William Morris. It was really the designs that first attracted me to Morris. Uh, the beauty of the designs, the way they incorporate nature, the lovely colours in there and the cleverness of the designing technique, the way he manages to disguise the repeat and the sheer number of designs he created over his lifetime is quite incredible. And then of course I came to realise all the other aspects of Morris's life, the printing, the socialism, the writing. He did an enormous amount uh, throughout his lifetime. I think Morris's work and ethos is definitely still relevant today uh, for many different reasons. I think there's a great appetite to learn about traditional manufacturing techniques and that was really what Morris was about, producing handmade, beautifully crafted items to the best of his ability. There's a lot of documentaries on at the moment, for instance, about people learning these traditional techniques. And of course, Morris hand block printed his wallpapers, used natural dyes rather than chemical dyes, quite an early environmentalist. I think if I could choose just one item from this exhibition, it would have to be this drawing because it's very relevant to this exhibition and Kelmscott House because when Morris moved into Kelmscott House he wanted to create a new design that had birds in it and he designed this drawing, it's actually called Bird, especially for the drawing room here at Kelmscott House and as you can see it's a mirror image, there was no reason for Morris to colour in absolutely everything, just, what the, just one repeat was fine and uh, you can see his handwritten um, notes at the top there, property of Morris and Company. And what's really special is that alongside that design, we actually have the finished product. Uh, we've actually got the uh, woven woolen hanging here. We've got some beautiful things in the collection, so it's difficult to choose one thing, but I'd say my favourite one is actually something that's on permanent display, and it's actually a beautiful embroidery that was designed by John Henry Durrell, one of Morris's colleagues, and embroidered by May Morris, his daughter. It hangs in the hallway here at Comscott House, and it's a beautiful design with birds and foliage and vines in it. And I think what's really special is the fact we have the working drawing alongside the finished embroidery, so you can actually see the process and the change that were made as well. The exhibition takes place here at the Coach House where William Morris ran the Hammersmith branch of the Socialist League and gave regular talks. It now houses the original Kelmscott Press. 
The Deer Walk and Weck at Hammersmith, a history of Kelmscott House, is on now at the William Morris Society every Thursday and Saturday until October the 26th.